go to school. Yes, you have to go to school. How do you say this? Oh. I see it, I'm taking it. I see that. Ready to go. Ready? Okay, turn off the TV. Let's go. Alright, turn off the TV so we can watch. Um, you wanna go or what? Kaylee, turn off the TV. I just shot an entire episode talking about the Moringa. Everything from seed collecting, collecting the seed pods, to planting the seeds, to growing from cuttings, to how they look afterwards, to why I grow Moringa, the benefits of Moringa, everything. I had the whole thing done, all of it. Then I looked at my camera and saw the microphone was off. Not one word of it was recorded. A whole bunch of video, none of it actually re made it. So, we're going to go over this again. There are a lot of reasons to grow Moringa. My buddy Brad over at the Big Family Homestead, he did a video the other, well, last week, talking about Moringa. He takes a powdered Moringa in a tablet that has had significant benefits to his health. Now those of us in the permaculture world, we're familiar with Moringa, especially if you live in the tropics, which I happen to live in the tropics. So the benefits of Moringa are far and above any other tree known. It's why they call it the miracle tree. All right, we know the Moringa's got more vitamin C than carrots, more protein than broccoli, all the amino acids, and on and on and on. So there's a lot of reasons to grow Moringa. What Brad takes is something that is basically they dry the leaves, grind them into a powder, put them in caplets, and then you take them as a daily supplement. That's fine. In Africa, they dry the leaves and add them to food. Any food, all foods, they dry the leaves, put it in everything. They also put the leaves in regular anything that they eat. They're eating the leaves everywhere. Um, parts of India, they take the pods and cook them like you would beans. So all over the world, they use the Moringa. I'm not a big fan of eating this stuff. It's a little bit bitter. It's not real bitter, but it's a little bit bitter. Uh, my sister-in-law, she eats the seeds. I bring the seed pods home and get them ready. She eats them. But another thing that a lot of people don't realize, you take the seeds, you can press the seeds to get oil. Then you take the cake, the powder, the, the residue from the seeds, and you can use that to clean water. You take dirty water, you put that stuff in, and all the dirt settles, and you're left with clean water on the top. That's what they do with the Moringa seeds. So the, the list of benefits, I mean, I could, spend a, I could spend a long time going into all the reasons to grow Moringa. Some of you might be thinking, all right, Scott, so you don't eat the Moringa, so why do you have so much of it? Because I've got dozens of them here, and I will eventually have thousands of them on this property. So why do I grow it? One of the key reasons I grow the Moringa is for eventually, we don't have animals yet, but as soon as the house is built, we're going to get sheep and goats. So you feed it to the animals. The animals then get all the health benefits, all the nutrition, all the vitamins, all the minerals, all that into their system. The milk you get from the sheep and the goats and the eggs you get from the ducks and the chicken, all the benefits of the health are pushed through the animals. All right, we're all gonna agree, Moringa is a great thing. So, how do we grow it? Now, there are two ways to grow Moringa, primarily two ways. The first is from seed and the second is from cuttings. So let's take a look at the seeds. We'll talk about the seeds. These are the Moringa pods. They're like uh, beans. Yeah, they're legumes. So beans, peas, that sort of thing. In order for these to grow right, you need to let them dry. And it's best to have them dry on the tree. Imagine if you were to pick your beans or pick your peas green and then try to grow them, grow those beans when you pick them green. 
doesn't grow well. So you want to pick them like this, very dry. They just fall apart. And once they fall apart, you got this on the inside. You really don't want this. This is green. And look at how green the inside is. It isn't dry. It's wet. I don't know if these would grow. Again, it would be like trying to pick your green beans green and growing them when they're green. I get almost 100% germination rate when I pick them like this. When Brad said they're really hard to grow, I kind of shook my head and thought, what is he talking about? I get these to grow. I mean, there's nothing to it. All the, all the moringas we've got growing here, not all, most of the moringas we've got growing here are grown by, I picked a bunch of these seed pods. I had a bucket full of seeds. We just dug a hole and threw two or three seeds in each hole, threw some water over it, and that's it. And that's how we got almost all of the seeds, all of the moringas we've got growing on this property. Just to give you an example, these are moringas that we grew from seed. I harvested the seed off this land. I planted the seed in these peat pots. And now we're going to plant these peat pots in the food forest. And if you look, I put two, I want to say two, maybe three seeds in each one. And we've got almost 100% germination. The last video I did before my wife died was about growing moringa from cuttings. This tree right here is a moringa that we grew from cuttings. This is why I did this in the video. I showed this in the video. This is one of the ones that grew from cuttings. So let's get a closer look at it. This tree was grown from a cutting. All we did is took a stick. Here's the stick. It was about this big. We stuck it in the ground, put some water in, left it. And here's the tree that grew out of it. Now this one is much younger. I stuck this stick in the ground much later than the other one. I just wanted to show what happens because this is what you have. You've got all this growth coming out of it. Here's another example of a moringa grown from a cutting. This was one of the moringas we cut down when we were chipping. And I decided to cut this stick up into a few pieces and try and grow from it. This is one, it's been about two weeks. So here's your growth. So you might be thinking, all right, Scott, why do you have so many moringas? You don't have any animals yet. We're going to have animals, but we're also planting far more. The, one of the key advantages is the moringa is a legume. As a legume, it fixes nitrogen. Nitrogen is the first ingredient listed on every fertilizer you buy. For those of you that remember your days in earth science, you'll know that nitrogen is the most prevalent gas in our atmosphere. It is almost 80% of the atmosphere. So people wonder why would you spend money on fertilizer with nitrogen in it when 80% of the air we breathe is nitrogen. Now the answer to that is the nitrogen in the atmosphere, the gas nitrogen in the atmosphere is not in a form that's readily available to crops. Legumes take that gas, feed it to bacteria on their root system and put it in the ground as fixed nodules for other plants or for themselves to gain access to. You can fertilize your forest by planting the legume. Now on top of that, the moringa is a very fast growing tree. These moringas are only a few months old and look at the size of them. They're less than six months old. What we can do with a fast growing legume is first it fixes nitrogen in the soil. Good. Secondly, when you coppice them, so when you cut it, the tree will root prune itself. It'll drop a majority of its roots into the soil, now freeing up all the nitrogen on those roots for all the plants surrounding it. Then we take it one step further. I will then take and 
throw the tree into a wood chipper and turn it into mulch. So now it becomes a fertilizer that feeds all the trees around it. My plan, and I haven't been able to do this yet, but the plan is to coppice all the legumes twice a year. We're coming up on the first time, but I haven't done it for some of these, like this one here behind us. This one I've not done because if you look, we have pods. We want the seeds. So I'm letting it go to seed first. Once it's done, I will cut it, chip it, and it'll become fertilizer for everything around us. Now, there's one more really great thing about Moringa. Moringa is drought tolerant. Now it doesn't mean it can be ignored and not get any water, but you would be surprised how little water it will survive on. I have several Moringa I planted over in another section that have gotten no water from me. And this part of the island is very, very, very dry. It's not connected to a swale. It's not connected to any irrigation at all. And they have survived. They aren't very big, but they're alive. So there we go, guys. We talked about the Moringa. Um, if you have any questions, put them in the comments. I'll do my best to answer them. And um, I really appreciate this is something you guys were asking about. I'm glad I could uh, do this. Uh, I will put in the comments uh, or in the description, I will put the link to the video I did on propagating them from cuttings. So those of you that want can go to that. I wish I was more familiar with the technical deal with YouTube. I'd be able to say up here. Unfortunately, I don't know how to do that yet. So it'll be a link in the description. Feel free to check it out. Thanks again, guys. God bless.